Hello and welcome to another update video about Luna Classic. Um, this is a coin that I only cover um, because it is, uh, I had a lot of requests by channel members. Um, I know I get a lot of requests daily here on YouTube. Now, as you will probably understand, I can't cover them all. I will prioritize always requests by channel members, which we collect on Discord. So if you are a gold member, silver member, and you will have access to Discord and Telegram, you can put requests in, the admins are sorting them, filtering them, and we put into a list and I try to work through. Um, still obviously a challenge to keep up with all these requests, but I had quite a few for Luna Classic, covered it um, yesterday in the member live stream. And uh, <laughs> what I said in the member live stream already worked out. So let's take a look at where we currently are. Because it's a very interesting chart though. Um, I'm questioning a little bit the reliability here of the Elliott waves, um, just due to the volume, you know, and um, due to the low market cap. And to be fair, I still see it here, a bit of a gamble. It's, take it with a pinch of salt, that's the message. Um, but still, I think we can use the Elliott waves here to look at it. And I can share my views about Luna Classic. Yeah, not judging it from a fundamental point of view, and so on. Um, it is a bit of a gamble, uh, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, also money can be made here. Money can be lost, of course. Yeah. But I want to share with you what my findings are by using the Elliott waves. So overall, um, obviously, I can only really cover it from the moment when we dropped. That was here in May. If I zoom in now, I'm on the four hour chart, we can see and I think I mean, I did cover Luna Classic before. And so far, what I said in that video, when was that June end of June I think that worked out nicely so that analysis from the last time worked out nicely so it might be adhering to the Elliott wave so we'll take a look so my view at the time was that we moved up here in an impulse a first impulse that reached here the what level was it the 60019 level basically here on the 14th of May directly after that drop so that's that's good because this was a move up in five waves we then came down in a WXY pattern. That's how I see it, WXY, with a bottom on the 9th of June. That was also what I talked to you about in the previous video. We then moved up. Um, so basically what you would assume that this first impulse obviously created a wave one yeah, on the 14th of May, which means that the bottom here was the wave two and that we are now in the wave three in white. Looking at the Fibonacci extensions, this should take us to around 0 0.001 yeah, uh, US dollars. So this is where we need to get to ideally to confirm a bullish scenario. You can see we're far away from that. So we need to cascade higher to confirm here a bullish scenario. Now we move down in that WXY pattern and then we start to make higher highs. That is first of all a bullish signal. So we made a wave one here, a sub wave of that larger wave one because a wave one in itself has five uh, sorry of that wave three because a wave three has five waves but this was only the first wave of many others to come so here a wave one and a wave two here then another wave one basically a sub wave of that wave three so if you look at the green wave count we made a wave one a wave two and after that you need to see the wave three this here was not the wave three in blue. Why? Because we came down too much. With this wick, we cut into the price region of the green wave one. Therefore, we've got a one, two, a one, two setup here. Next, I think this is, no, where were we in my last video? I think in my last video, we were just here somewhere. Yeah. And I said, we expect the wave two down now, which we did. That means after that, you expect the wave three to the upside, which happened. Yeah, wave threes are always very bullish, very impulsive happened works out very nicely in terms of the Fibonacci extensions as well. So if we just take a look at these fibs from the wave two low here to the wave one. So looking at the fibs, we reached perfectly the ideal area for a wave three in blue between the 1.618 extension and the 200%. So we can assume this was a wave three in blue. Then I said, um, and that was in the, in the, um, in the live stream yesterday, yeah, that this here was either an ABC, but I rather think this here was a triangle in a wave four. A triangle is very often 
a way four, so it was basically an A, B, C, D, E pattern. Yeah, that would be expected to break out to the upside, which it then did after the, um, I believe after the live stream actually. So quite interesting. Um, and we could now say that we might have finished already here the wave five of the wave three. Okay. Um, even though at the moment though, if we go to the lower levels, let's see if I, yeah. Mm, let me just see that wave three peak here. Yeah. And then A, B, yeah, okay, this can't be a triangle, don't worry. So we have here an ABC, yeah, wave four low was here. And then you could consider this as a wave one and then a wave two. This would then be probably the wave three here. And now we are, have a wave four and five still coming. So I don't think this is necessarily over yet. Might push a little bit higher in a wave five to complete here the wave three. After that, we would expect a larger dip in a wave four, not a massive one, actually a rather shallow one. Yeah, not too massive, maybe in the in the sort of range of what we saw here. Yeah, coming down maybe, yeah, you know, in, in well, but due to the length of the wave three, it will be quite substantial. So let's assume we might end somewhere there. Yeah, around, um, oh, let me just do that. Let me, let me calculate by the FIP extensions where we might actually be landing. Um, just by taking here the um, length of the wave one and we add it to the low of the wave four. And then we get a couple of targets. Now you can see that we already reached the one to one ratio perfectly. So again, it could be over here, even though I think another wave to the upside is missing. So that was here at three, five, uh, three, four, five, oh, seven. Now we reached that perfectly in a way that that's the one to one ratio. That's normally an ideal target for a wave five, but the next target would be four, two, oh, two, four. Yeah, so that was the 1.618 FIP extension. That would be, in my opinion, more likely because in my opinion, there's one more wave missing here to the upside. Okay, so I uh, need to keep an eye on that. If we then, let's say we, we reach that area, I'll highlight that now here on the chart. Let's say we reach that and let's say we retrace from there, then we can obviously measure here the length of the wave three and look at the retracement levels. You can then expect us to come down again into this region between the 23.6 and the 50% FIP level. So between 33436 and 23724 roughly. Yeah, with an ideal level in between here, the 38.2% FIP level at 28065. From here then we would need to push higher in a wave five. Yeah, but if we go higher in this wave five, we, we're probably still far away from the ideal level of the white wave three, because eventually we need to fill this out. now. This could be, we, we're gonna see a few more extensions here. So, but irrespective of any of that, a key target to break through is here, the previous swing high. That is an absolute relevant high that we need to break through. That is the 60019 level. Yeah, that was reached on the, I believe it was the 14th of May. Absolute crucial. Without getting above that level, we don't even need to talk about anything else. This is the previous wave one high. We need to break this eventually. And obviously we're getting closer and closer to resistance. I wouldn't be surprised to reach it, but I can't promise you we're gonna break it. This will be a stress test for the bullish case. We need to break this level. And if we get above that, I think we can see some significant upside. Maybe it could even double to that wave three high. This is the level that needs to break because it is basically restricting all of this range here. Okay, and that's my update about Luna Classic. So hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.